Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girlfriend Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a, thumb, video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to the prophet was scared of this scene more than the draw, uh, which is um, it's intriguing. Like, what scene could be? could be that deep also a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting and sharing and everything that you guys do it never goes unnoticed we are very grateful i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i already said what i'm reacting to so without wasting time let's get into the video let us begin by talking about a simple incident that occurred in the life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day the companions were sitting in the masjid talking about the Jal or the Antichrist, the Jal. And they were telling whatever they had heard, whatever the Prophet had told them. And the stories grew into legends, legends grew into myth, as you know how it goes. And the Sahaba became, the companions became a bit scared, a bit terrified. When the Prophet came to see what they were doing, he saw a group of people who looked a little bit scared. So he said, what is the matter? Why are you so terrified? So they said, we were talking about the coming of the Jal, the coming of the Antichrist. We're talking about the coming of the Jal, and we were very terrified. We got very worried and concerned. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Do you know something that is more terrifying for me that will afflict you than the Antichrist himself? Do you know something that terrifies me more than the Jal? They said, What, O Messenger of Allah? He said, minor shirk. Minor shirk here means polytheism. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I am worried about something more than the Antichrist. And that is minor shirk. And shirk here means polytheism. But in this sense, it's, it's not that type of polytheism. So the companion said, what do you mean by minor shirk? What is minor shirk, O Messenger of Allah? He said, it is when a man stands up to pray and then he sees somebody looking at him and so he beautifies the prayer because he sees somebody looking at him. So the man is praying, he says Allahu Akbar, he's intending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he finds somebody staring at him in the masjid. All of a sudden he straightens his back. And then he begins with tilawa and tajweed. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And when he finishes the Fatiha, he gives a long Ameen. And then he, know the, he knows the guy is looking. So he says, begins with Baqarah. Alif Lam Meem. Typically he reads, Inna A'tayna Kal Kawthar. But now the guy is looking, so he begins with Surah Baqarah. This is how the Prophet defined minor shirk. Beautifying the prayer. And that is changing your intention, or I should say, corrupting your intention. This is what minor shirk is. It is to corrupt your intention and to add others besides Allah in order to gain praise of other people. So you're praying to Allah, you're not praying to an idol. Had you prayed to an idol, this is major shirk, right? This is not major shirk, this is minor shirk. You're not praying to an idol. You're not prostrating to a false god. You are praying to Allah. You're giving charity for Allah. You're doing what you're doing for Allah. And then your niyyah is corrupted. Your niyyah transforms. Your intention transforms. What does it transform into? To gain a little bit of recognition. A little bit of praise from the people. So there's a dual intention. There is deep down an intention to please Allah. That's why you're praying. But there's also an intention to gain recognition, to gain fame, to make people think that you're holy and pious. And this is what we call showing off or riya. The Arabic word is riya, which is showing off. And this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ defined minor shirk to be. Now, do realize that excessive minor shirk, continual minor shirk, is actually a sign of a hypocrite. A sign of a hypocrite, a pure munafiq, a hypocrite. Everything that he does, he does for the people. Why does he come to the masjid? He wants to impress the people he's praying. Why does he give charity? He wants the people to think he's, he's giving charity. If a person's entire life and entire deeds suffer from riya, from showing off, this person is a hypocrite. 
This person is a hypocrite because his entire worship was dedicated for the sake of his fame, his recognition, his prestige, his ego. And our Prophet wasallam said that Allah said, Allah said, I am the entity that is least in need of any association. I don't need partnership. This is a hadith Qudsi, the famous hadith. I am in least need of partnership. I don't need to share anything with anybody. So anybody who does something to please me and to please someone other than me. Notice this is minor shirk here. He's not doing it for an idol. He's not doing it for some other, other entity. Anybody who does something to please me and other than me, I leave him to his partner. Let his partner reward him. I'm not going to reward him. So this man who stands up to pray and he straightens his back and he recites Surah Al-Baqarah and he wants to impress the people, does not realize that his whole salah, his whole prayer will be thrown back at him. Come time for the fundraiser. Somebody writes that magnificent massive check and his intention for writing the check is so that it's announced on the podium. Oh, mashallah, Dr. So-and-so gave half a million dollars. Takbir! Everybody says takbir. Now his ego is larger than the room in which the takbir was said. When this happens, we have a serious problem. And that is the problem of minor shirk. That is the problem that the Prophet ﷺ said, I am more worried about this problem than the Antichrist. Do you know why? Even though, according to our tradition, the Dajjal is the most terrifying event that will ever happen to humanity. When the Antichrist comes, the seas are going to split and the moon is going to... All of these things are going to happen. Why is the Prophet ﷺ more scared for the coming, for, for the existence of minor shirk than he is for the coming of the Antichrist. It's an element of pragmatism and reality. The Antichrist, the Jad is only going to come once. And when he comes, may Allah help the people at that time. But until he comes, there will come hundreds of generations, thousands of generations. They're all suffering from this disease, from this calamity of insincerity, of mixing their purity for Allah with wanting the praise of the people. And this is a real and present danger. So why, O oh companions, this is his point, why are you talking about something that is far away when you have a clear and present danger right here and now? And that is insincerity. So he said, I am more worried about insincerity, about showing off, about riya, about minor shirk, than I am about the coming of the Dajjal. And it's going to be more harmful to my ummah than the coming of the Dajjal. And before I move on, by the way, there's a very powerful hadith that shows us the dangers of showing off. The dangers of showing off your good deeds to other people. And that is the hadith reported in Bukhari and Muslim, in which we learn that the very first people who will be called to task on the day of judgment, and the very first people who will be rewarded or punished on the day of judgment, will be the Hafiz of the Quran, the martyr, the Shaheed, and the one who gave of his money all the time for the sake of Allah. These are the first three people whom Allah will call in front of him. The memorizer, the Hafiz of the Quran, and the martyr who died in a legitimate expedition, and the charitable person. And as everybody is looking at them, they will think Allah is honoring them. Allah is rewarding them. Allah will give them the first share of the pie of Jannah. So Allah will ask this hafiz, why did you memorize the Quran and why did you recite at these gatherings and at these masajid? Why did you go and do this? So the hafiz will stand up with pride and he will say, Oh Allah, I did it to bring honor to your book. I did it for the izzah of the religion, for the glory of the religion. I did it for your sake, O oh Allah. And Allah will say, Kadabta, you're lying. And the angels will agree and say, you are lying. And the books will be brought forth and it will be clear that his intention, Allah will say, your intention was not to please me. You recited the Quran so that people would call you Qadi, Hafiz, Shaykh, and they did. So get your reward from them. And then the second person, the martyr, the one who waged a legitimate expedition and he gave his life for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be asked, why did you spend your life in the way of Allah? And the man will say, because I wanted to bring help to the religion. 
I wanted to bring i'la al kalima as we call or, or bringing help to Islam, glory to Islam. I wanted to defend the religion, defend the weakless and the homeless and the poor. I did it for your sake, O oh Allah. And Allah will once again say, Kadabta, you're lying. And the angels will testify you're lying. And Allah will say, you only did it so that people could call you, MashaAllah, Mujahid, MashaAllah, brave man, MashaAllah, you've done so much. And the people did. You got your reward from them, none from me. And the same with the third person, that he will say, I gave of my money to be a generous person for your religion. And Allah will say, you only did it so that you could be known in the community, so that people would call you generous. And that is exactly what they did. And then Allah will punish these three in front of all of the creation. And they will be the very first people to enter the fire of hell. Billah. And Abu Huraira was listening to this hadith and the Prophet ﷺ tapped his knee. And he said, Ya Abu Huraira, these are the first three people who will taste the fire of hell. The Hafiz and Qari. And the, in one rewind says, the scholar and, and, the, and the orator. May Allah Azza wa protect all of us. And the one who is a shaheed, the martyr. And the third one is the one who is generous. Why? Because their intentions were not correct. They had this mixing of intentions. They wanted to show off their deeds. And imagine brothers and sisters, imagine the fate of the person. He's doing good his whole life. And he thinks he's going to meet Allah with all of this good. And then he is told, you didn't do it for my sake. You did it for your own ego. You did it to, 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 to inflate your own prestige on the people. Why are you wanting me to reward you when you didn't do it purely for my sake? Imagine the fate of that person. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to make sure we are not that person. We are not that person on the day of judgment who is told you wasted your whole life and all of your deeds will be thrown back at your face. We need to make sure that every action that we do, every action has that same level of sincerity. Perhaps, perhaps that one deed that I've done, that Allah is watching me, is so pure, so sincere, that Allah will overlook all of my sins and cause me to enter Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, La ilaha illallah. There is nothing, no deity, no being that is worthy of our worship, our veneration, our love, our prostration, our sajda, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us exemplify this kalima. Let us live this kalima. Let us put this word into actions and then and only then will be true representatives of the religion of Allah on this earth. Wajazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, imagine all your deeds being thrown back at you because you wanted to pretend. You wanted to pretend all in the name of what? To impress the person that's looking at you, to impress your neighbors, to impress the people around you saying, this is a dedicated person yet in reality you yourself know you're not doing it for god you're doing it for the people around you not even for yourself but for the people around you those people won't be your way to heaven them being pleased won't be your ticket to heaven them being pleased won't be a ticket to you having a relationship with god um it's all about being sincere if you're going to say you have faith then make sure you have faith. You won't care what other people think about you. What you will care about is what you and God have. What you are doing out there that only God knows. It's not everything that we should we should show our friends. It's not everything that we should show the people around us. And it's not everything that we should give away or in the name of I'm doing it for God, but you really are not. Otherwise, very interesting video. Let me know what you guys actually think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.